Oh my gosh, this is so unbelievable. Um, my, my heart is bursting with gratitude for all of you uh, for being here tonight. This is um, far exceeds what we ever imagined we could put together for such an important milestone. And um, it's just such a beautiful thing to see so many friends and familiar faces and people who love each other. And um, so just thank you so much for being a part of this special evening. I, I, there, there's so many people to thank, but there's one group in particular that I think deserves to be recognized. And if you can I'd like to see a show of hands. Could the, the spouses and significant others of squash players please raise your hands? So we, we squash players are a, well, kind of a diverse bunch. Um, um, but, but one of the, the defining qualities of squash players is our tendency to think that people who don't play squash enjoy it when we talk to them about squash. <laughs> and, and um, you know, over the years, um, I've learned that that's, that's not true. <laughs> like, like, it's not true at all. Um, it's really not fun for non-squash players to hear about how our league match went, or how our knees achy, or for the older set, like how we got a new hip, um, or maybe worse yet, how like, hey, did I ever tell you years ago about that big match that I won against Pete Carlin? No, that's, there's nothing fun about that, and um, and so. So this night must be your worst nightmare. <laughs> Holiday weekend, Midtown Manhattan, corporate hotel, snowstorm. It couldn't be worse. There's, um, there's one person at, at my table who, who I would like to thank for being here with me tonight and in life, and that is my wife, Mitha. Who, who, by the way, is gonna give birth to our second child in a few weeks, so you can imagine just how fun the last few weeks have been for her as we've prepared for this event. Um, while I'm at it, I'd like to thank my family for introducing me to this sport, for encouraging me in this work, and for wrapping their arms around so many programs across the country. So thank you. It is, it is amazing that we're at 25 years. I cannot believe it. And I, I can't help, of course, but think, for those of you who, who, who know how I got involved about my freshman year in college, I, um, I started school in 1996, and my coach, Bill Doyle, who's here tonight with, <clears throat> with, with many of my teammates, like basically all of my teammates are here, thank you. Some traveled from Calgary and San Francisco and London. It's, so inspiring and wonderful. Um, so Bill organized a team meeting my, the fall of my freshman year, and he told us about this academic tutoring and squash program that was being started by his friend Greg. And he asked us if we would volunteer, which of course we were all happy to do. And so we went over to the YMCA across the river and Hemingway on campus and the Harvard Club of Boston, and we tutored academically and got on the squash court, and it was, in, it was inspiring. It was so wonderful to 
be a part of Squash Busters in those early years. And it was so wonderful to think about how this sport that we love so much, whose boundary lines had for far too long in this country been narrowly drawn, that it could be used for a higher purpose. And so it was just wonderful and exciting to be a part of it. But there, there were questions that we all had um, in those early years. And the first was, would it work? Like Hugh, Greg and Squash Busters were just getting started. Uh, so the question was, will, will kids stick with it? Will they enjoy it? Will the outcomes be good? Will we make their lives better? That was the whole purpose. And, and the, the, second, the second question was really about growth. Squash Busters started small. Could, could it enroll more kids over time and extend beyond middle school? Could, could it attract people to be generous beyond its starting budget? And, and then, of course, people started to wonder, might, might programs sprout up in other cities, uh, not just Boston? And, and tonight, 25 years later, those questions are answered. And what started as a 24-student program in Boston on a $70,000 budget is today a network of 25 organizations across the country and around the world that are enrolling 2,500 students and young people, and over $20 million is invested in these programs every year. <laughs> growth, growth is wonderful, and we're proud of, of how far these programs have, have, been, have, have gone. Um, but what really matters is the first question about whether it works. And, and it does. 270 students from our programs have won scholarships to independent high schools. 168 students have played varsity college squash. Nearly 100% of our participants graduate from high school and 95% go to college. There are truly too many people to thank for all of this. This room, as big as it is, as many people as there are, by the way, one of our roles at SEA is metrics and numbers and tracking. It's like a part of our core mission and and a couple of the speakers here got it wrong. We are not at 1,400 people. For those of you who are wondering, it's like 1,300. <laughs> but it is, that is a big difference. Um, so, so as big a group as this is, we actually represent a very small fraction of the thousands and thousands of people who have volunteered and mentored and given and been board members and supported our work. And it's just, it's extraordinary how many people have been drawn into this community. But, but I would be remiss if I didn't recognize a few groups. And I'd like to ask them to stand and be recognized. First, to the founders and executive directors for their vision and leadership, please stand. And second, to the many, many hundreds of people who have served on our boards today and in the past, please stand to be, and be recognized. And third, to our staff, 
people who could do anything and have chosen to dedicate their working lives for one purpose, which is to help kids, to help them become better students, healthier people, to feel better about themselves, to have a better future. It is extraordinary the commitment that our colleagues across the country and abroad show every day when they show up to work to do their job. So please all staff members here stand and be recognized. And last, and most importantly, our students and alumni. Stand now. Keep, no, 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 keep standing, keep standing. In, in life, in life, doors can be unlocked, but we still have to open them and we still have to walk through. And that is what you have done. That's what you did when you showed up at tryouts. That's what you did when you stuck with the program, when others encouraged you not to. That's what you did to earn the grades, to be ready to go to the college that you wanted to go to. In the process, you have not only changed the game that we love so much, but you've helped change the game of the world that we live in. So thank you. Tonight is about looking back, but it's also about looking ahead. And on behalf of all of our programs, I want to ask and encourage each of you to stick with us and keep going. If you haven't been involved to date, I hope you will. Volunteer, become a mentor, give. If you're already involved, do more. Give more of your time and your energy give more of your money, and love. Do as much as you possibly can. At SEA, we think about three questions. The first is, how can we help our programs do better? The second is, how do we provide more students, how do we provide more opportunities for our students and alumni? And the third is, how can we help bring this extraordinary model to other cities that it doesn't yet have? St. Louis, Washington, D.C., Portland, Oregon. There are also wonderful organizations in this country in Houston, Atlanta, Seattle that want to join this network and need a little bit of help. That's what we do. And tonight ensures that we are gonna be able to continue to push forward in that work. So thank you so much for making tonight possible. Before, before I introduce our alumni speaker, the main event, I wanna, I wanna acknowledge the person who started the program that she comes to us from when Sandy Schwartz, the founder of City Squash, reached out to me to ask if I might be interested in, in being the first staff member at City Squash in the Bronx, the first thought came, that, I, that came to me was, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, that sounds pretty cool. I love, I love this whole squash and education thing, but isn't there a program in Harlem already? Street Squash had been started three years before, and so I knew George Polsky, and so I called him, and I just said, hey, look, I just, I just got this call, and, and a program, it sounds like, is going to be started at Fordham in the Bronx, and it sounds pretty interesting, but I keep thinking that small, you know, 
new program, maybe there's cannibalization, and um, what do you think? And I kind of, you know, had he told me, anyway, I just, I wanted to know what he thought. And he didn't miss a beat. He said, this city needs more programs like Street Squash, so that sounds awesome. You should do it. And um, George Polsky is a singular force in this network and an extraordinary leader, and he's a wonderful human being. So thank you, George. Where are you? Stan. Rocky Drame is going to tell you her story, but I can tell you that she works on the tra trading floor of Citibank as a software programmer. She has won the respect of all of her colleagues and friends through the city, for their, through the streets. There you go, city squash, street squash, you know. It's not the first time that happened. Um, but people love Rocky Drame. And so I thought I would just share a few, a few quotes from people who were important to her in her life. George said, I hope every street squash student and my own children turn out to be like Rocky. I could not be more proud of all that she's accomplished, and I, ex I am so excited to see what she tackles next. Pat Kosker, one of the best friends that this network has. Pat Kosker, the coach, the coach at Hobart Williams Smith and previously Bates. Rocky was his captain at Bates, and he described how she brought everyone together and said she was a rock star. And Ivy Pakoda, Ivy Pakoda, her mentor, described Rocky this way. She's capitalized on every opportunity that has come her way and has created so many of her own. But more than that, she's one of the coolest people I know. Rocky Dramay. <laughs> 